Hello, in this video we will use Blender's particle system to create basic hair. So let's get straight into it. I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything. So A to deselect the cube and A again to select everything. X, delete. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a sphere. This is going to represent my character's head. Not a very good looking character but nevertheless. I don't need that much detail so I'm just going to change it to 16 segments. It doesn't have to be so high poly. Save a bit of memory. And then let's scale it up to be about that size. All right, and I'm going to press 5 to turn it into orthogonal view. And we can confirm that it's orthogonal by seeing that there. So it's front auto. So I'm in front view and auto. Now in uh, now I'm in user auto because I'm actually controlling it by the middle mouse. All right, so we have our head. It's just a circle. To create my hair, I'm going to go ahead and add a particle system to my head. So let's just quickly rename this to head, just in case we don't get confused. And uh, let's go to the particle tab on the properties window, press new. When I play back my animation, it doesn't look like he has hair. It actually looks like he's sweating out of fear or something. Um, so we need to change this particle type from emitter to hair. So now we can see that our character has a lot of hair. The hair does look a bit strange right now. It's like an afro that's growing everywhere, but we can control that. So to create good looking hair, first of all, we need to enable advanced. Uh, you rarely ever use the basic settings to create good looking hair. You generally always use advanced because you want to play around with the settings when you actually work with hair. And generally with hair, you tend to have a lot more than just thousand strands. I'm pretty sure if you count the number of hair strands on your head, you'd have much more than thousand. So I'm going to push it to 5,000. Um, even that's not enough, but um, I don't want to crash my computer. So I'm just going to keep it there, at least for now. All right, and you can see it's sort of bunched up like that. So I don't want to keep it like that. So I'm just going to move it to random. You can sort of see it's sort of bunched up like that. And the main reason is because, well, it's sort of emitting from these faces. So that's the main reason why it looks like that. As I mentioned, I don't want to keep pushing this number higher and higher because this will crash my computer. So I'm going to actually use a, another cheat. I'm going to use children. This will actually give us, it's sort of like subdivision in 3D modeling. It sort of subdivides the current hair with more hair around it, with child hair. So all these hair strands you see here are parent hairs and it will add child hairs around it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and enable children particles to this. So just hit interpolate it. And there you'll see we have tons and tons of hair, which doesn't look quite right. So uh, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and change the display. Oh, we don't need that much. 10 should be fine to render. To display, I just want to show it as one because uh, I don't really care much um, about what I see in the display. I want to save as much memory as possible. So the display will just show one child per parent hair strand. And the render will, well, basically when you, when you actually render your scene, it will show 10 children per parent strand. These tend to control the shape of your hair. So if you want to have curly hair, straight hair, specific types of hair, you, you play around with these settings. So I'm not going to really go into that in this tutorial. It's too advanced. Um, let's just see what our hair looks like when it's animated. So to make our hair animatable, we have to enable hair dynamics. So just click that checkbox. And you'll also see a number of different settings here as well. Again, I'm not going to go into this. this. All these settings are related to how you want your hair to behave as it moves during your animation. So if I now play back my animation, and it is actually calculating frame by frame how the hair should animate. So I'm just going to wait until this is done. So if it kind of looks like uh, Simba from The Lion King, I've sort of created like a mane. That's pretty cool. Now if I play back my animation, as long as I haven't changed any of the settings, uh, we should see a much faster uh, display because it's temporarily cached it. And we can see our hair actually animating. So now I'm just going to quickly go ahead and animate the head moving. So let's just create a keyframe on frame 1, go to frame, 50, go to frame 60 and move the head somewhere here, go to frame 100. 20 and move the head somewhere there and then uh, let's just there and then maybe uh, come back to the beginning again okay so now let's play back my animation 
So I'm just going to pause it until it's done. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and stop uh, the calculation by pressing escape. So now when I play back my animation, I should see my head moving and the hair following the law of physics and moving accordingly as such. So beautiful. Our hair is actually behaving quite nicely. So I'm just going to end the animation on 210. So now when I play back my animation, we can see the head obeying the law of physics. So that's pretty good. But as I mentioned before, this isn't very good looking hair. So let's just go in now and give our character a hairstyle. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and disable hair dynamics. To give our character a hairstyle, we will need to become a barber from a hair salon. So to do that, we will need to comb the hair and cut the hair and style the hair accordingly. And we can do that in Blender. All you have to do is select the object that has the particles coming out and then change from object mode to the particle edit mode. There's a lot of modes in Blender that you can work with. So over here, we can actually create our hairstyle. And very similar to the sculpt brushes, we also have different brushes here as well. So this brush you can sort of visualize as a brush you would use when you're in a hair salon. So if I press comb, you can imagine this as a comb. So again, you can use the F key to control the size of your brush. And at the moment, you can't, you don't really have a fall off. It's always going to be solid. So, you know, you know bear with that. The strength and ra the radius controls how big your brush is. The strength will control how intense or strong the brush will take effect. And uh, the mirror, the, all this other stuff are hopefully self-explanatory. So I'm just going to go ahead and become a hair salon barber. There's no real technique that I'm following here. It's just basically made up. If you're a hair specialist, then go ahead and um, comb it the way that you prefer. You don't have to follow me. But I'm just going to go ahead and just do that. First of all, I noticed a mistake. There's hair coming out of the character's face. That's not realistic at all. That I don't think I've ever seen that. I've never seen a character having hair coming out of their face and eyes and nose. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that hair that's around there. So to do that, I want to use the cut brush. You can imagine the cut brush as scissors. So we can just go ahead and slash out all that hair. We don't need it. And there we go. And we can see our character's face again. Alrighty. Oops, I cut a bit too many hair there. Nevertheless, we've, uh, we, we can now finally see our character's face again. All right, so that's, that's great. Now we can go to the comb brush again and continue to comb it nicely. I've actually cut off too much hair over here. That's not a very good thing when you go into a hair salon and found that your barber actually shaved off the side of your head when you didn't intend to. But luckily in Blender, you don't have to worry about that at all. Because unlike the real world, you can just add it back again. Which is not realistic, I guess, but anything's possible with Blender. So there you go. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint a bit more hair where I want it. And I'm just going to cut off hair in these areas here. Okay. So there we go. Now I can continue to comb it. And give our character a bit of hairstyle. Uh, sometimes if you comb the hair too hard, like if I go over here and, and comb it in too hard, uh, you'll notice that the, the, the hair sometimes penetrates through the mesh. You can use another brush called the puff brush. These will just puff out your hair. Obviously you need to spend a lot of time, maybe even hours, just to get the hair right. It takes a lot of trial and error. For my short film Uir, uh, I spent a few days actually working on his hair. But generally, yeah, I can't create a Pixar level hair within five minutes. That's, that's probably the best I can do in five minutes. So I'm just going to leave it at that. So back in object mode, you can see our hair has taken effect. Um, it, doesn't look the, it doesn't look the best. Uh, and again, there are techniques to get rid of that hair. Sometimes uh, Blender does play up like that. F for this example, I'm just going to turn off the children. Um, you only tend to use children if you're working on uh, higher end models. 
we have lots and lots of them here, but since it's a beginner tutorial, I'm not going to use children, just so that I can render quickly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create material for my hair. So if I look at my hair in rendered mode now, so let's quickly add a sun lamp. And this is also add, oh sorry, turn. this is also add a camera. Uh, and let's just look at our character. If I look at that rendered now, we and change over to the cycle render. If I look at it rendered now, you'll notice that wow, we've got some hair going on there, and it actually looks quite good. So look at how beautiful that looks on our model. How awesome does that look? To, we can also give our hair a bit of color and texture as well. So to, to do that, just select your mesh. Uh, you'll notice it says default material. We don't want that. So go into the materials tab, add a new one. Let's just name it hair. Or let's just name it face first. And this is where you define the shader for the character's face. But I'm going to add one more and call this hair under it. So this is going to be the color of the hair. So for hair, I, I generally tend to use a hair BSDF shader. And I, I put any color I like. So I'm just going to give them maybe a brown, a dark brown hair color for that. So now I want to tell the head model to use the face shader for the actual sphere and to use the hair shader for the actual hair. Now, by default, the sphere is going to always use the one that's on the top. The hair doesn't know that it should be using the hair shader. It's probably still going to use the face shader. We can tell our head model to use the hair shader instead of the face shader for the hair. So now when I press render, you can see that we've created nice looking brown hair on our pretty below average character face. So that's basically it. Uh, that's the basics of creating hair in Blender. I hope this video has been useful and I hope to see you in the next video. Keep blending.